Hey everybody, we are back at Too Full to Stack. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm not really your host, it's just me, so just me. I um, want to thank, as always, uh, CFE.dev for uh, letting me hang out on here once a month. Um, today we're going to be talking about serverless and uh, we'll take it all the way to the edge, uh, pun intended. Just going to grab a sip of coffee, as always. I don't know if folks use StreamYard quite a bit, but uh, I'm still a little clunky in it. I stream on Twitch all the time. Um, and if folks are interested in giving me a follow on Twitch, you can just head on over to nickyt.live. Uh, that just redirects to my Twitch. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about serverless, like I was saying. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to go like so bare metal as in like we're deploying right on AWS, we're gonna be using like a platform as a service. Uh, I used to work at Netlify, so I'm gonna be using Netlify to demonstrate the usage of uh, serverless and edge functions, but these things exist on other platforms as well, like Vercel, uh, Fly.io, uh, basically think of any, any platform you can think of. Um, they are available on AWS as well, but you know, it's not a platform as a service there. So. Um, that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Um, we're just going to kind of go through some basics. I think, uh, we'll build out something, uh, have a bit of fun. Maybe we'll end up building out an API. Um, aside from that, uh, I'm going to show stuff on my own website as well. Uh, not cause I'm trying to promote my website, but I had a very good use case for an edge function, which we'll get into in a bit later. And also where I'm currently working at, opensauce.pizza. I just started there last month, two Mondays ago, sorry. Um, we have an actually interesting use case for uh, OG images. So uh, we'll kind of go through that too. Um, as always, if you got questions, just drop them in the chat. Uh, I'm still used a little more to Twitch where uh, the chat usually chats a bit more, but that's all good. Don't worry about it. Um, so we're just going to have some fun here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, make sure I have I can see the comments. That's a uh, one thing for sure. Okay, let me just close my browser over here so that uh, I'm not gonna be doing anything Inception. Okay, cool. So let's switch over to my screen. Uh, would help if I shared my screen. Okay, this is what I mean about. Uh, getting used to uh, <laughs> getting used to the platform. So, okay, so we want to go on screen one. Okay, cool. Okay, so you should be able to see my editor, and I'm actually surprised. I have this new, um, it's a new extension which doesn't appear to be in here at the moment, but it's uh, it's called Theme Switcher. Um, I don't know why it didn't sync. It is my stuff out of sync. Let's restart to see. Um, it's really cool uh I, I extension i think because um it starts off with um you know you can basically change your theme during the based on the time of day which has nothing to do with serverless i know but uh, i'm just going to go ahead and reinstall it because uh it's pretty neat i have no idea why i got out of, out of sync but uh, let's do that theme switcher i believe it is uh yeah this one theme switcher by savio santo sara so let's Okay, it's installed. Okay, something's missing. Anyways, let's go to light theme. I'll sort that out later. So let's go to color theme. And I don't know. Uh, you know, it's the usual debate, you know, who's uh, who's using dark mode or light mode. But I, I don't know what happened. But at some point, I just kind of turned back on to light mode for some reason. So anyways. Okay, so you should all be able to see that. And let's just come back here. Okay, so we're just starting off with a blank project. And um, if you're, like I said, you can do this on many platforms. We're using Netlify um, today. Um, and the Netlify comes with the CLI that you can install and you just run NPM install Netlify CLI. I'm not gonna go ahead and do a uh, global. Uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because I already have it installed, but uh, let's see here. 
let's go ahead and let's just start creating a function. So like, why would you even want to use serverless to begin with, I guess? Um, there's, you know, and people make jokes about it, like serverless, there's no server and stuff. But the thing is like prior to the serverless revolution, I guess, uh, you had servers that were just running all the time. So like you would deploy your website onto a shared hosting. Like I know years ago, I used to use something called Bluehost. I'd pay like eight bucks a month and I'd have so much space and memory and I'd have my site up there and the site was always running. And, you know, that worked fine. But then, you know, things got expensive. And then basically with serverless, you can kind of pay as you go to some strength. To, to some degree. Um, and it's proven to be, I think, an interesting model for people. A lot of people are using it nowadays. Uh, like I said, Netlify, Vercel, they all use serverless under the hood. So it's it's definitely definitely being used. The, the interesting things about it are it's kind of like, it only kind of spins up when you need it. Uh, there might be some nuance in there, but that's kind of the general idea. I'm um, just going to go ahead and check the comments here. And if, like I said, if you have any questions, just feel to drop them. Hey, how's it going, Aaron? Yeah, I, uh, I uh, dropped a, I tagged you on a tweet. Somebody was looking for devs who are comedians and you're the first person that popped into my head. So I'm sure there's others, but uh, you, I don't know. I can't think of any offhand, but anyways. Not sure what they were looking into, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, VS Code setups are different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just saying before, I don't know when you hopped on, but um, I've been kind of on the light mode lately, which is surprising to myself because before I was actually, um, what, <laughs> yeah, the super wide monitor, uh, I got to tell you, like, so I only use one monitor. I do open up my laptop on the left sometimes, like when I'm streaming, like I am right now, I have it open because it's just easier to manage things. But I had a 27 inch monitor for the longest time and it worked really well and it was a good monitor. And then just when you're doing web development, you know, you've got your, you got your browser open, you got your tools and everything. And I, I it really took me a long time to find one because, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Why did I not think Salma? Yeah, Salma's totally comedian. Um, but yeah, I finally bit the bullet and there was a good deal on Amazon. I researched it because it's like, I don't know about both of you, but like, I, I don't really know anything about screen resolutions and like, you know, the, uh, I don't know, the, all the DPIs and all. I, I know a bit of it, but like people were saying, get this one, get this. And so like, I think I ended up getting one that's, 2k it's not a 4k monitor which i don't think i need anyways but um the nice thing about this one is there's a usb hub built in the back uh, i'll i'll drop you a message after brian if you're interested in it i got off amazon canada but uh, they sell it in the states for sure um, but i love the wide monitor now because then like i'll have my editor and then i can have like my browser and everything and it's all on the one screen and just from a ergonomic standpoint like because i had a ergonomic ergonomist uh, evaluate my whole setup at one point and they're saying like one of the problems with people is the neck pains and it's a lot of the turning to look at your other monitor like all day so uh anyways i've got it all set up and it's uh i've been loving it since i had it so uh yeah just remind me later i'll, I'll pop that to you um but anyways uh, like i was saying yeah i got hooked on the light theme for some reason but I've been a big fan of so many, like Night Owl from Sarah Drasner. Uh, I don't know why nothing is working right now in terms of my themes, but um, oh, there we go. It's kicking in. Oh, it's Night Owl Light. That's why. Where's the regular Night Owl? There we go. This is a good one. And the one I've been using the most, it's another one from Sarah Drasner. It's Fortnite. And I love this one too. But I, I kind of noticed during streaming, like even though I like this, um, I don't think it really brings the screen well for, for po people checking out the recordings later. So I've been on this light modern default. So anyways, that's about uh, 10 minutes talking about nothing to do with serverless. So, so like I was saying, you know, there's many things you can do with serverless. You can create APIs. You can actually have it render HTML. Uh, interestingly enough, because I used to work on the frameworks team at Netlify, 
So like, for example, if you're running Remix or Next.js or, or, you know, view any of those server side, uh, sorry, any of those uh, JavaScript frameworks, if you're on a platform like Netlify or Vercel, it's using serverless functions. So it's kind of cool that you can go from just a API to like a full fledged framework running off of these. And I don't know if we'll get to that today, but uh, we could maybe try and build out kind of like a mini web server to some degree. Um, but for now, we're going to get started. So uh, I'm going to use the Netlify CLI here. And let me just clear this. OK, you, can, you folks can see me type in there. I might move my. No, it's OK. I'll keep myself there. I'll just drag the terminal up a bit. So Netlify has, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Always down to talk pros and cons of different frameworks. Yeah, no, that would we could definitely do that uh, another time. I'd be down for that for sure. Um, could probably get a few other people on too if you wanted to have like a, a panel. Ben uh, Ben Holmes from Astros, uh, always great to chat with. Um, okay, so like I was saying, we're going to be using Netlify today to just kind of demonstrate some of this stuff. And Netlify comes with a CLI you need to install, like I was mentioning. So it's just Netlify. Um, there is an alias for it though, and everybody that works at Netlify always uses the alias. We've we've never updated our documentation externally because I think uh, I don't know why, but anyways, everybody uses NTL. So I've already initialized a new Netlify site here. Um, so we have just a Netlify toml. This is just a configuration file for some things. So if we look in here real quickly, I won't spend too much time here, but. Basically, we're going to have a folder for functions. Netlify puts this by default when you uh, set up your TOML, uh, like when you initialize a new project on your machine. Uh, I don't have a framework or anything, so there's nothing here for build command. And that's OK, because we're not going to be using any of that today. Um, but the neat thing about the Netlify CLI, and every time I've shown people this, they, they weren't aware of it. But um, Aside from being able to do stuff like deployments and run in developer mode, development mode, you can actually uh, create boilerplate stuff. So I can do NTL functions or, or Netlify functions. I can go create. And what this is going to give me is it's going to give me two options here. I can either create an edge function, which is using Dino, which is what uh, uh, Netlify uses for their offering. If you're using something like Vercel, they're using uh, Cloudflare under the hood. Um, and then we can also do a serverless function. Uh, we support Node and Go, or they support Node and Go. I don't work there anymore. Great place, though. Um, so I'm going to go with a serverless function. I've never written a Go one, so we're just going to stick to Node. Now, for the sake of today, I'm pretty comfortable in TypeScript, but we're just going to do it in JavaScript just to. Uh, make it easier for everybody who's following along. And the neat thing here is you're given some templates. And like, obviously, these are just starting points. But let's start off with one like just hello world. And we can give a name to the function. It defaults to hello world by default. I said default twice. OK, so it's going to create it. And now you're going to see there's in this Netlify folder, there's a functions folder. And in there, there's hello world folder and then hello world js um interesting that my theme just changed i think that the uh theme switcher kicked in i don't, no idea okay anyways i'll just roll with it i guess cool cool um <laughs> anyways so it's uh i'm gonna close this here just to give us some more real estate but essentially what it did is it created a boilerplate of a function here that we can use immediately. So it's got this handler here. And this is the same on all the platforms. They have a handler. What, what gets passed in here might vary. But in the case of Netlify, it's event. And in event, we have a few things in there um, that we can use. Uh, maybe I should have gone with TypeScript, actually, because I'm trying to remember all the things. Let's do that. Let's do TypeScript instead, just so we can get some IntelliSense. So one more time, let's do that. Although I worked there for quite a while, I'm forgetting all of the stuff that's available off the event object. OK, let's install that. OK. Cool. 
come back here and okay so now all of a sudden oh and it added context too but uh that's new interesting okay um no it's not new all right so we've got this like hello something okay and there's a few things on the event object we have here so we have event dot so you have like body headers, the HTTP method. So for example, like a get or a post, uh, some other ones, uh, you might not use these so much, but the path, query string parameters, the raw query and the raw URL. So you can see here, uh, if I just undo this, that uh, the query string parameters, um, we're, we're checking if it has a name property in the query string. Uh, we're gonna use that if there is no value. This is just JavaScript uh, default value in destructuring. So it's gonna say stranger. So let's go ahead and run this. So NTL dev. And let's run that. That should kick in here. Of course, it opened on the other screen, classic. Come back over here. Now, it's going to give a 404 here because I don't have a website running or anything, but I do have a function, uh, Netlify functions, and let's go hello world. And there we go. So we get this JSON payload back, which is cool. And if I put this side by side, I'm going to close the sidebar just because we don't need that. And I'll zoom down one. I think that should be okay for people to see. So we can see here what happened was we came in, um, it goes to in the query string parameters, grab the name. If it doesn't have anything, use stranger. And you can see that in action because if I just say Aaron and save that, and then I rerun this, it's going to say, hello, Aaron. So we can see that that's getting picked up. So let's actually add a query string here. So let's go name equals Nick. I'll press enter. And you're gonna see it says, hello, Nick. And obviously these are kind of trivial things here now, but like you could see how you could start building out APIs with this, um, which, is, which is pretty neat. We can do other stuff. So like right now I'm saying this is gonna return a HTTP status code at 200 because everything's all good, but we could fake an error like 400 and then we could just save that. And if we refresh it, okay, it's returning. Oh, it's because I'm returning the body. Uh, need to add a status text. Okay, in there, oops. Okay, it's giving me a bad request now, uh, which is which is normal. So you can see here, I'm getting an error right away. If I zoom in, it's saying 400. And if I change this to like 500, and then refresh this, you're gonna get a 500. There's, uh, I've never had to use this, but there's the teapot, which uh, just side note, but HTTP 418, it's, little kind of fact, I guess. Let's uh, put this here and this. Uh, how do I highlight a comment to get? Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. It should pop up in a second. Show. There you go. Um, so teapot is a. It's a weird one. It's it's a real code, but uh, like it says in here, it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, somebody was just being silly. But uh, anyways, you could say return 418, I'm a teapot. So anyways, that's just a little weird, funny side note. So I come here, I'm a teapot. Again, we're not doing anything mind blowing here quite just yet, but uh, let's just hide that. Okay, cool. And oh. Okay, I got a syntax error because of that. So I'll just use string template. That. Save it. Oh, I stopped my server. Oops, because I got a crash. Okay, so let's run that again. And yeah, okay. And then let's 
close that refresh on the teapot but anyways so this is kind of like silly stuff to start but you can see already how like you can serve something different um you could also return like 200 and body and then we could just say like pretty sure you can return html here Maybe be doing it differently but there we go there and let's put that there yes i know there's an extension that does this but anyways let's save that and then if we do this there you go i'm all of a sudden i'm serving html which is kind of cool and this is where you can kind of see like maybe we could start serving different things so like let's just have some fun here and like uh Let's just maybe start building out a small web server. Uh, not web server, like, uh, yeah, no web server. So we could do something like if you've ever used Express or anything, we could just say like uh, route and stuff. We could start off simple here. So let's comment this out for now. I'm going to close down below there just so we get full real estate here. And Okay, we've got the query string parameters, but we could also see like what else we got here. We've got cons. Uh, it's bothering me, so I'm just going to say as um, record. There we go. Cool. Um, okay, yeah, so let's work with the past now. So let's do, for example, event dot. I'll put that and see what we get. Let's come over here. Let's refresh. So you see, I get the path to my function, which is not what I want. Uh, uh, oh, well, it is. Yeah, actually, sorry. Um, if it's if we're doing a a web server, it's like we would have to basically alias these, but we're not going to do that for now. But let let's say if we went to like slash hello world slash nick would that work yeah so we could do this all of a sudden and like we're gonna start off in a trivial manner so we'll just do switch name case uh, uh, nick that will be the lower Okay, that's good. Okay, and then if it's me, I'm gonna do, uh, you know, we'll do something different. Um, hello, sure. Okay, case, Aaron. Let's do, sounds good, but we're gonna do something different. We're gonna say like, Aaron's a comedian, so you get marquee. And let's do that there. Cool, cool. And let's undo that. Cool. It's getting a little long here. Um, this is obviously not optimized code, um, but let's do this now. And then, oops, say default. And then we'll say uh, return status code. And we'll say like, 400 and we'll just say or like we'll we'll just say 404 uh, and we'll say page not found okay so let's oh and we don't need this here okay so basically we're getting the name from here so let's start off with nick Doing page not found. Did I do that right? Let's check the path here. Okay, hold on a sec. Do, 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 do. This is what I love about live coding. Nothing is ever perfect. So we could actually debug this. Let's do that. So there is a CFE.dev with me where I did it. It was the first one I did, and we did a debugging one. 
Uh, I'll try and find that, or I don't know if if Erin's still paying attention, if she can drop that while I'm doing this, but um, I'm going to start the debugger. So just give me a sec here. Let's open up here. So if you're in VS Code, and, and I went over this in the, uh, in the other one that I did on CFE.dev in the first two full stack, but uh, one of the ways you can debug in VS Code, at least, is there's a JavaScript debug terminal. So I'm going to run NTL dev again. And so it's going to start the debugger. And I'm just going to hide that. And OK, let's do this. Yeah, we got enough real estate. I'll just hide the sidebar for now. I'm going to put a breakpoint. And I'm going to refresh. Uh, let's close this. Let's refresh. Why is it not picking up? No. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, Sarab. Uh, yeah, I can post the talk. Uh, sorry, the uh, I'll post the code up on uh, GitHub after. Just um, I'll tweet it out after, or uh, I'll add it. Actually, what I'll do aside from tweeting it too, but. I'll add it as a comment in the uh, video once it's uh, up on, uh, well, it's it's already up on YouTube, but once the recording's kind of all done and stuff, I'll, I'll pop a, a message in there. Okay, uh, I am curious why my debugger is not kicking in, but you know what, uh, whatever. It's a live stream, I'm not gonna waste too much time on this, so let's just stop that. Exit and let's just go back to the other one. And we'll just do old school console logging for now. Uh, right. Let's do console. Oh, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> so it, it, the reason why it gave an error actually is because I put slash Nick, but before it was. I'm using the name which is coming from oops, which is coming from the query parameter. So if I do this, this will work. There you go. Um, and then let's go for Aaron, and it should show it up in marquee. There we go. Um, I'm just doing silly stuff here, but you can kind of see how you can start to build out something here. So let's do some other stuff here. Uh, as much as I love Aaron's name going across the screen, let's go back one. Um, OK, so we're basing it off of there right now. And that's not what we want to do, actually. So we don't need this anymore. We're going to base it off the rep. So let's do const. Um, see, uh, I want to see what GitHub Copilot says for me. Uh, check that the path matches slash hello world slash name. Yeah, exactly. I'm always just kind of tinkering with GitHub Copilot to see what it does. Event.patch. OK. If it doesn't match, OK, yeah. So it's giving a 404 if it doesn't match, but that's not what we want. So let's do this. Uh, we can split it actually. So let's let's do that. Um, split the event dot path. So the first part is slash hello world, and the second part is an A. Yeah, we could do that. I guess one, two, yeah, whatever. Okay, yeah, sure. We can just, let's just split it. I'm just uh, not really up for splitting this all the way. So we can do this and then we can see here, console, whoops, these are the path parts. And let's do a console.log path parts. And I'm gonna open up the terminal here just so we see this when I load it up. Uh, so we're just going to put Nick here now. It's going to give a 404, which is expected. Oh, and the name isn't set anymore. So let's do that. Uh, const name equals, just for now, we'll give a 404. OK, now when I go here, you're going to see the parts. So one, two, three, four, and then Nick. So 
basically we can just match the Nick part here. I could probably just regex it actually. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, event dot path. Uh, uh, match. And we want to do slash hello world dot star. Yes. And we'll do that. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, we'll say not slash. You know, regex course here at the same time. Uh, plus. OK, and I'm going to give this a named group. This is a, this is regular expressions. This is nothing to do with serverless at the moment, but I'm just going to say name. And that should give us the matcher. And I should be able to do this. Uh, const name matcher matcher.groups name world. OK, that's doing the default, so we could just say stranger, sure. OK, it's complaining because I have aim defined, or what is it complaining about? Oh, wait, there we go. Sure, name does not exist on type. Yeah, OK, sure. Yeah, that's true, but uh, we'll just do as any for now. It's not finding it. Groups, yeah, if matcher, yeah, we could do that. Matcher, matcher groups name. Let's just do this. Say matcher, use optional chaining, and then we'll say name. Also, thanks for uh, hanging with us today, Sarab. Good to see you. Okay, so their matcher groups is possibly yes sure let's do that no oh yeah it doesn't like that okay matcher groups is possibly undefined yes it is that's right okay so let's do matcher groups and matcher groups so the name is either going to be string or undefined and then name is possibly undefined. That is true. So what we'll do is we'll just give it a default value of string. Oh. Now what's it not like it? Name string. That's right. Oh, OK. I just got to put in parentheses. We're dealing with all kinds of stuff that has nothing to do with serverless right now, but that's OK. Cool, cool. So at this point, I'm just going to console log name. And I really wish my debugger was working just to show that. But OK, so let's come here. And I'm going to put a name that won't be found. And we're going to see here the console log name. OK, yeah, it's empty. So it didn't match it. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Hello world. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna go. This is actually a, a very good site uh, for regular expressions. Let's go to regex 101. Once we get past this little hump, it'll be all good. Oh, I think I need to escape that. Okay, then we're good. So if I do this slash hello world. And then I say Nick. Is it matching that? Hello dash world slash Nick. Oh, whoops, that's it. Isn't that capturing incomplete group structure? Non-capturing group. Oh wait, no, sorry, wrong syntax. There we go. That's a named group. Okay. And then what else? Hold on a sec. Named capture group. I've got the syntax wrong. Ah, there we go. 
they had this in C sharp a long time ago when I was using it, uh, but they came in JavaScript, I think a couple of years ago. So you can see here now my regular expressions good now. So it's going to match anything after slash Nick, uh, sorry, after slash hello world. So let's pop that in there. Okay. Now it should console log out the right thing now. So yes, I want to leave this site. Okay. Let's reload this. Okay, now you're going to see here down in the terminal that it's actually uh, selected ASDF. You can't see that, though, because my face is covering it. Here you go. There you go. You can see right here. Okay, so we're good. And it's giving a page not found. That's, that's expected. So I'm going to close the terminal so we can get back some real estate here. And so now we can pull out the name, which is great. So now we can go like, okay, well, if it's Nick, there we go. And then, you know, like if it's Aaron and we're, we're kind of back to where we were, but now we're, we're kind of building out this kind of like routing mechanism a bit. And, uh, you know, it's very rudimentary, but, um, you know, we could all of a sudden start creating different routes and stuff. And, you know, if I don't, find somebody here and give me the page not found um, but you could do other stuff like we could do let's say case redirect and then i'm gonna i'm gonna let the uh, chat gpt kick in there yeah the marquee is back baby um i i still love the marquee even though i know it's officially deprecated and not recommended to use it's still it's kind of uh i feel like we're, we're from the same era kind of brian so it's like you know all those old tags are they're just super fun okay so we have this very rudimentary routing system it's literally just a switch case but you can see here like okay what if i do a redirect now and if i type that in all of a sudden it's going to do a redirect. So you can kind of see how this becomes these building blocks for somebody to be able to build out like a whole framework. Um, again, these are kind of like trivial things I'm showing here, but uh, you can kind of see how like something like a, a remix or like a Next.js or Vue.js, how they kind of started building out these things. And it's just pretty neat. And the thing I like about this is like currently at least like I'm in one file um you know uh the the developer experience is really good um because i'm just running locally right now and actually i can start it up and if i do dash dash live let that kick in again it's going to give me a different url now but if folks actually want to try this i'll drop it in the chat but if you go to this so let's go here slash dot netlify slash hello dash world slash Aaron. I'm just going to test that before I send it. I'm here. So, oh, netlify functions. And again, like this is like a long path right now, but you can change this with like uh, redirects and stuff. You can see here now, it's loaded up Aaron's page again. So I'm going to drop this in the chat and I'll, now if you go to this link here, that link is actually live. So that's running off my computer. But if you want to go see it, you'll see the marquee. Uh, yeah. So if you go Aaron, it'll work. Um, so I'll use the live one too. And I'm just going to bring back my developer toolbar here using Arc Browser, which I know people have mixed feelings about it, but I, I, I don't know. I just really love it. I don't know why, but I just do. Uh, Get DX. And uh, here, so like if we go to Nick again, and you can test all these things live. And then we could do, you know, the redirect again. And if you try that, drop that in the chat, go to that, it should redirect you to Netlify. There you go. So again, this is 
kind of fun stuff. Um, I worked on the frameworks team too, so maybe it's slightly more exciting for me, but it's just to show you that like frameworks can be built with this thing. You can create APIs with this. Um, there's, there's more advanced stuff we won't go in today, but you can have like scheduled functions. This is supported on, I know at least on Netlify and Vercel. Um, there's background jobs on both of them. Um, so those are more advanced ones, but still very approachable. Uh, but just given the time frame we have here, I'm not going to go into that. So let's come back here and okay, yeah, that's the redirect. That's not what I wanted. Let's just go to let's type in Brian and oh no, we got a page not found. So we gotta we gotta give Brian a page here. So I think for Brian. I think Brian deserves a marquee too. Uh, uh, so Brian, and we're gonna go old school with some font tags. And let's do that. I don't know if on, uh, don't know if on Mac if it exists, but I don't think it does, but let's try it. Comic Saw MS. All right, and let's change that to Brian. Okay, and let's reload this. All right, oh, it is working. Uh, uh, getting the comic uh, saw mess there. That's awesome. So we got the font face. Uh, let's uh, let's add bold over here for Brian as well. Is a serverless slash old school uh, HTML elements uh, stream today, I guess. All right, so this is all fun. Um, I'll just clean this up a bit. Uh, I'm gonna add a prettier config to this. So if you folks are fans of prettier, which I think a lot of people use it nowadays, uh, I'm gonna create a dot prettier RC file, and I'm not gonna put anything in it. Um, or actually, I do need to put. Uh, I think I just need to put an empty config. And I'm gonna save that. I have the Prettier extension for VS Code, so I don't have Prettier like installed in my project and stuff. But it's nice because then it just formats the stuff. So like, if I do this, it should reformat it. Cool. All right, so let's do git add. So this is just my alias, and we're gonna. Get chore added uh, the awesome web framework. Cool, and we're gonna push that up to get. All right, so we got that. So this has been kind of just digging into serverless functions so far, but there's also something called edge functions. Now, for all in tents and purposes, they, they kind of operate. It's the same kind of idea, but with edge functions and uh, Brian, who's in the chat, has a really good article on the edge. I'm just gonna try and find it, Rinaldi Edge. Uh, serverless, oh yeah, we did a stream together actually. Uh, I'll, I'll drop that too, uh, why not? Uh, because it it links to there. There's I'm pretty sure if I look in the notes, yeah, it's got his blog post in there as well. Check this out. Um, this was a, a really great stream with Brian. Brian's been in the space for a long time and and knows this stuff really well. So I'll just drop that up there if folks want to check that out. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create an edge function. So the main thing between like well, there's a few things, but like. One of the big differences with serverless and like, uh, I would consider edge still serverless, but the difference is edge functions run closer to your user. And I remember when I did a Twitch stream with uh, Sunil Pai, who used to work at Cloudflare. Um, he was just talking, he's kind of joking, but maybe being kind of serious, like, like devices come as close to you as possible. So like all your, your internet service provider, Cloudflare is probably running on there. So like they have all these endpoints, uh, that are super close to you. And he was joking that like, maybe one day, you know, like your washing machine or dryer, you know, the, the edge will be there, you know? So like literally like, I don't know about any, everybody else, but my dryer is about eight feet to the left of me. 
Um, thank you, noise canceling. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and let's create an edge function. So just like we did before, I'm going to run NTL functions create. Again, this is super handy. If you weren't aware of this, if, you're, if you happen to be using Netlify, uh, the functions create is a great way to just kind of get up and running. Uh, OK, so we're going to create an edge function. Uh, I'll go with TypeScript. OK, now there's a few things here. And we've got about 15 minutes, so I might go through this. Yeah, we'll spend some time on there. And then I'll, I'll probably, what I'll do is I'll link to the examples. So uh, what I'll show you real quick is an edge function in action. So again, this isn't to promote my website. It's really just to show you what happens. So right now, I'm in, East, in the Eastern time zone. So for example, I have a stream coming up next week with somebody from Microsoft on device script. And it's Thursday, October 5th, and it's at 1 PM Eastern time. That's what I see. Now, Saurabh, uh, I'm not sure where you're, you're at uh, in the world. But if you go to this page, if you go to my home page right now, you're going to see the same content except for the date. It's going to show you the localized date for you. And the thing to note here is I'm not localizing the date on the client side, which you can do. But then you end up with this like weird flash of content. So you might see like, like, I don't know, say it's the UTC time at first, the page loads, and then all of a sudden a bit of JavaScript runs on the client side and goes, oh, Nick's locale is Eastern, so let's just change it. Um, so you don't need to do that. Um, what you can do is you can do that on the server, and that's what I do, and I use an edge function. So as my web page gets loaded, an edge function will run that modifies the content and goes like, okay, Go find me all the, I have date time elements on my, in my markup. So I just find those and then I get the times and I localize them. So if you're still on the stream, uh, Sarab, I'm curious to know what time you see for the, for my upcoming stream next week. I'm guessing, I'm guessing you're somewhere either. Well, you're not in Montreal. I'm guessing is what I'm getting at. Um, okay. So. Let's get back here and we'll, we'll kind of touch on that. So um, let's go for geolocation. And we'll just call it, I'm just going to call it geo for short, just to make it easier. And what route do you want? OK, uh, yeah, sure. Let's go slash geo. OK, now if we come here, I've got this. OK, because it's Netlify, there's a configuration for Netlify. So if I go to slash geo, that's where that edge function is running. So uh, oh, OK, I thought you finished it once we uh, we did that stream, uh, Brian. If not, uh, let me know. I've, I've, well, it's pretty much pretty much the same code kind of we were looking at during that stream. But uh, it's been super handy for me. Um, it's just like a nice feature because it's it's super it's not the end of the world, but like you, you have to, you know, you put the time out there and like, I don't want to put Eastern because like, that's just kind of me assuming everybody's in Eastern time zone. I could put UTC, but then people are calculating, okay, I'm in PT time. So that's UTC, you know, uh, minus E seven or whatever, you know? So it, it's, yeah, it's definitely a nice thing. Yeah. If, if you get a chance, yeah, I, I think it's worth it. So this is just adding a configuration here uh, for the edge function. You can also do it within the edge function, but I'll just leave it as this for now. So let's close that and NTL dev again. And let's come here. Oh, would you like to use configure VS Code to use edge functions? Yes. I'm saying yes here because in the context of Netlify, they're using Dino, so it's adding a, uh, a VS Code setting. Um, don't need to know so much about this, but basically it just makes things work better in the editor. It doesn't affect your actual function from running. So let's save that. Let's close that. OK, so we got nothing here. But if I go to, it should be slash geo. OK, so now you're going to see here. Um, it's returning me all this geolocation information. So it's telling me I'm in Montreal. 
Oh, good. It doesn't know my phone number. That's a good thing. But it's telling me, okay, you're in Canada. I'm in Quebec. That's where Montreal is for folks who've never been here. And it's giving me longitude, latitude, and my time zone. So that's pretty cool. Now, if we come over here, let's just go take a peek at that file. So this is just telling you what's available, um, which is everything we get outputted there. I'm just going to delete that so we get a bit of space here. Okay, and you can see here, all we're doing is actually returning, there's this context object and the context has information like geolocation that we can get. Um, so that's that's kind of neat. Uh, and we're just returning JSON here, but <clears throat> getting back to, and, and you can add other things like headers and stuff. So like if I open this in the dev tools, oh, my dev tools are over here because had a meeting before and we were, I just had to squeeze it out of the way. Wow. Okay. So let's come to the network panel here and I'll zoom it in. Oh, get rid of that filter. And let's zoom in the dev tools. Take that link down. Okay. So I'm going to refresh this. Uh, let's go back to the network panel. Okay. So we got the JSON payload there. Why am I not? Oh, yeah. So I got to set all. Sorry, I was filtering. Let's do that again. Stream, and I'm not going to see. I must. Oh, I have a filter on. There we go. Okay. So let's just go here and look at this geo. That's, that's the endpoint we hit. So we see the JSON there. Uh, I'll zoom it in a bit. Always. Always a challenge on a stream to show things really well. Um, sometimes things zoom in, sometimes they don't. Okay, so if we come back to the network panel here, you saw this preview of, let me refresh it. Okay, let's go to Geo. And you can see here, it's the JSON payload that we were talking about, but we can see the headers here. If we scroll down, there should be this other header. Where did it go? There should be a geo one. Okay, there's a bunch here. Should be near the end. Did I skip it? Interesting. There should be the response headers. Let me zoom down. I can't see stuff. But, um, oh, it's in the response. No, preview, initiator, da, da, da. Okay, maybe I did something wrong. But you can add headers. You, you can do all kinds of things. You could add cookies. You could redirect. Um, a really neat thing you can do is, let me zoom this out and zoom that down. So we could say, like, you know, if the path is, like, for example, you know, you could you could basically gate a page. So you could say like, let's do here, if quest dot, let's see here, uh, trying to think here, looking at, looking at time here. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. Okay, so this is one thing you can do. There, there's other things you can do. The geolocation data is really neat. So I do wanna show, I'll open up my own website. Do I not have it on this machine? Oh, I'm on my work machine. Um, that's true. Okay. Uh, let's just go to GitHub then and show it. I can kind of explain what's going on. Let's go to GitHub. Um, but before I do that, so like essentially, you know, running on the edge, you're still running serverless functions, but you all, aside from running closer to your users, you get information about the users, like their location, which can be super handy. Uh, you can use it for other stuff. Like if I'll just show you with the, uh, we won't, we could do one more here. Let's do NTL functions create again. And might have to stop the server just in case. Let's do an edge function again. Type script and let's do like an AB test value. And let's call it AB test, sure. Uh, uh, slash test, sure, that sounds good. 
Okay, cool. Let's exit that and let's do P. Yeah. Uh, yes, AB test. Okay, so you can see in here. Okay, I've actually never run this particular example, but um, you know, you get a bucket. Uh, it's just setting a cookie here. Get the cookie called bucket name, and it's saying here return if we find a cookie. Otherwise, let's create another cookie, sets the cookie, and then it tells you you've been assigned to another bucket. And essentially, again, a trivial example, but it just shows you the power of just getting different buckets. So if I do dash live again, um, in terms of A-B testing, um, it's a very contrived example, but you could totally do this with... Uh, something more complicated like i don't know if you have users that are you know if you think of e-commerce if you're coming from canada you know always redirect to the canadian site etc um, so let's go to test okay so it says i've been assigned bucket a and if others go to that so i'll drop that in if folks want to try that um, and if i reload it I'm still on bucket A, but let's let's open up a new window. Do incognito so I get some fresh stuff here. And this time I was assigned bucket B. And again, a simple example of showing this, but this is the power you have with these kinds of things. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna go to GitHub real quick because I just wanted to show you some of the code I did for uh, that localization and what Brian was talking about. Uh, when we were on that stream that I dropped, um, Brian and I had started working on localizing the dates on the server side using edge functions. Um, so uh, if folks that check out the CFE dev events, uh, I, I'm not sure, Brian, I can't remember. Is that, that is open source, right? Like if folks did want to contribute to that, if you had some guidance. And it's all the H I'm in. Uh, but let's go to nikkit.co. That's my website. And let's go to edge functions. And so I'm I'm getting my stream schedule. Let's go to the home page though. And let's look in here. Okay, I've got some Airtable stuff because I, I load stuff from Airtable. Um where am I changing it? Okay, so I get the time zone. Let me zoom this in. Uh, and so this is a real world example. This is literally what's running on my website right now. So there's a few things I do. I, I very, there's a very header, which out of the scope of this thing uh, that we're talking about today, serverless, but it's a HTTP thing. So you can vary on things. So I vary on the accepted language, and which is a header that gets sent. And I also create this X dash time zone header. And in that header, that's where I set the time zone of that person. And then that way the page gets cached for that particular time zone. So like if a hundred people from Montreal or people in the Eastern time zone that are English, it's going to load the same page. It's not going to go get it again. And let's see here. I'm trying to remember where I pass in. Okay. Yeah. So it's here. I have this get latest markup. So I'm just, I'm literally just passing in the time zone and if we come to that, let's go here. Okay. So the time zone is being passed in from the edge function. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm changing the date. So I'm getting a localized date on the server side. And then that's what gets rendered in the markup here. And again, like I was saying, anybody hitting the Eastern time zone, they're going to get that time and so on. So uh, I'm going to drop these links. We're almost at time here. It's kind of a whirlwind tour. Uh, these are hour longs. Uh, they're called two full stack. Um, we do these about, well, no, it's once a month. This is the third one. They're getting smoother and smoother. I'm still getting acclimated to, uh, to StreamYard compared to OBS. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the whirlwind tour. Uh, I want to thank everybody for popping by today. Uh, Sarab, I'll drop a link to this repo in the comments of the video. And I'll drop links to some other examples like I was showing you for changing the time zone for my site. 
And as always, uh, check out all the events at cfe.dev. Lots of great stuff going on. It's not just too full, too stacked. There's all kinds of stuff. There's Dev Relish, all kinds of other events. So definitely check that out. And with that, I will see you all later. Thank <laughs> you.